Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ihsan Tanamasitio, and I'm an English postgraduate student of Faculty of Cultural Studies, University of Sumatera Utara, Medan. And today, I'm going to explain about optimality theory in phonology. Let's get started. Optimality theory, or abbreviated as OT, is a linguistic theory that reflects resolution of conflicts between the competing constraints of a set, a language. So, this theory was firstly introduced in the 1990s by the linguists Alan Prince and Paul Smolenskri through their book entitled Optimality Theory, Constrained Interaction in Generative Grammar, two times published in 1993 and 2004. Well, uh, this theory, even though originally developed uh, from generative phonology, the principles of optimality theory have also been applied in the studies like morphology, uh, syntax, pragmatics, language acquisition and change, and other linguistic uh, areas. And the main difference between optimality theory from any kind of phonology theory in common is that OT here is constraint-based rather than uh, rule-based. And what is actually the objectives and the purpose of optimality theory, you may ask? So optimality theory, or OT, aims to prove, explore, and investigate the idea of that all languages have a set of constraint or barriers, okay, which produce the basic phonological and grammatical patterns of that particular language being discussed. Okay. And that constraint, actually, there are basically two main types of the constraints themselves. They are faithfulness and markedness constraints. Let's see further about constraint. So, <clears throat> faithfulness is the constraint that requires correspondence between the input, input here means the mental representation, what is going to be uttered, what is going to be produced by the speaker, and then the output or surface representation. As we can see in the syntax, there is a deep and surface structure. As in optimality theory, there is an input mental representation and the output, that is the surface representation. What has been produced, what has been uh, uttered or sound by the speaker. Okay, that is faithfulness, while the markedness is the constraint that either demand unmarked configuration or prohibit marked pro configurations. So it imposes requirements actually on the structural well-formedness of the output. Well, let's see the example on the slide. As you can see, there is the input and the output figure. For example, like the sound is firstly nasal, okay, it's firstly nasal as it in the input of the speaker, mental. And then when the output produced, it becomes, it may become nasal, sonorant, and voiced. So it is evaluated. It's been through an evaluation 
from the input to the output and it become how optimal the production of the output is. Another example that we can see on the slide is the plural, plural form of the word dog, means dogs, D-O-G-S, as the pronunciation transcription, dog plus Z, it's voiced, dogs. As you can see on the table, there are several types of pronunciation transcription. There are five actually, first dogs, dogs, doggies, doggies and dog. Well, from the comparative table for dog plus Z, it can be observed that any ranking of these constraints will produce the observed output dogs, because there are no loose preferring comparison. Dogs, because there are no loser preferring comparisons, dog wins under any ranking of these constraints. This means that no ranking can be established on the basis of the input. The violations incurred by the candidate, as in doggies, are a subset of the violation incurred by doggies. Specifically, if you emphasize a vowel, changing the voicing of the morpheme is a gratitude violation of constraints. In the dog plus z table, there is a candidate dogs which incurs no violations whatsoever. Within the constraint set of the problem, dogs with Z harmonically bounds all other possible candidates. This shows that a candidate does not need to be a winner in order to harmonically bound another candidate. So that's what we can see from the example. And optimality theory has a structure. So the structure of optimality theory, yeah, there are basically three sets of structure. As you can see on the slide, there are first con, yeah, a set of constraints on phonological representation known as constraint component or abbreviated as CON for short. Then there is GEN, stands for generator, okay, is a means for generating relationships between an actual input and all potential outputs that is known as generator or abbreviated as GEN for short. And then the last structure is EVIL, stands for evaluator. It is a mechanism for simultaneously evaluating the potential outputs against the set of rank constraints in order to select the optimal output for the input in question. That is known as evil evaluator. Well, then that is those three other structures of optimality theory that is very important in uh, analyzing any structure, any sounds, production of the uh, optimality theory. So, as you can see on the slide, there is a figure. This figure represents the how uh, the structure of optimality theory works. Okay, so you can see first the word absorb to. Okay, that is on the input, the mental representation. Then it generates by gen. So the word absorb to, generated by gen, the candidate 
the candidate here uh, is the old uh, pronunciation, all the transcriptions of the word. So absorb too can be many kind of uh, pronunciation. As you can see, absorb two. The second is absorb two, and then absorb two and absorb the two, and etc. And then those uh, candidates being evaluated by evil, which later then produced be the output absorbed to the correction. So it, it is related from input to output. There is a process between both of the uh, terms. So then, ladies and gentlemen, as has been explained before, let's conclude things. First is optimality theory, or abbreviated as OT, is a linguistic theory that reflects resolutions of conflicts between competing constraints in a language. It was first introduced by, originally, Alan Prince and Paul Smolensky through their books. The objectives or the aims is to prove, explore and investigate the idea that all language has their own set of constraints and it has a set of structure that is con, gen and evil. That's all the presentation about optimality theory in phonology. Thank you very much for your very careful attention. Have a nice day and Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.